Hi, I'm Congressman Paul Gosar, and I represent Arizona's 1st District. I am proud to be working here in Washington for the benefit of the great people of Arizona, including so many senior citizens. One of the highlights of these first 12 months serving this great district has been maintaining an open door policy and continuing in an open dialogue with my constituents. Today, I would like to take a moment to personally respond to an issue that we've received many phone calls and emails about. The future of two major programs in our country, namely Social Security and Medicare. Many of the good folks in our district have received misleading calls or mail, which led them to believe that I support legislation that would cut benefits for current beneficiaries. Let me be clear. First and foremost, I find it shameful that so-called advocacy organizations who purport themselves as a resource to seniors are using misinformation to scare them for political gain. As a matter of fact, these same groups know that not addressing the necessary patient-centered changes will end in bankruptcy and failed programs. The individuals and groups responsible should be ashamed of themselves. Your leaders in Washington must keep faith with our nation's senior citizen, as well as future generations, by making the tough choices required to protect Social Security and Medicare for this generation and the next. However, your national leadership is equally obligated to address our dawning fiscal crisis and not kick the can down the road for future generations. President John F. Kennedy recognized this fact many years ago. In signing a bill reforming Social Security for his era in 1961, President Kennedy stated that, the Social Security program plays an important part in providing for families, children, and older persons in times of stress, but it cannot remain static. Changes in our population, in our working habits, and in our standard of living require constant revision. I agree with President Kennedy. We must continually reevaluate these important programs to make sure they are working and that they are sustainable. The numbers are clear. Social Security, along with Medicare, are broken and must be revised to conform to the modern circumstances. The fact of the matter is, our economy has been relatively strong and in some cases booming over the past three decades. And as a result, politicians in Washington put off the tough decisions needed to reform Social Security and Medicare for the current times. Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid spending currently comprise 40% of our federal budget. And with the baby boom generation only beginning to reach age 65, the problem will only get worse. It's time for politicians to stop worrying about their re-election and start worrying about the well-being of their constituents. That's what I was elected to do, and that is what I intend to do. According to the trustees of the program, the Medicare Hospital Trust Fund could exhaust its reserves in 2017, rendering it insolvent years earlier than the trustees predicted last year. Its unfounded obligation is $13.4 trillion, $1 trillion higher than last year's estimate. That amount would have to be deposited in an interest earning account today in order for Medicare's Hospital Trust Fund to be able to pay all of its scheduled benefits over the next 75 years. In April, my colleagues and I put forth a budget that would make bold and necessary reforms to Medicare, revamping the system for Americans 55 and younger, so that they can choose from among Medicare-approved private health options and receive a premium support payment to help pay for the cost of that plan. The plans, which also will be listed on a new Medicare exchange, are required to provide coverage to any Medicare beneficiary that asks. This would save significant amounts of money particularly over the long run. It preserves Medicare for future generations without touching benefits for current retirees or anyone near retirement. Social Security is in no less dire straits, mainly because of our changing demographics and increasing lifespan. According to the Congressional Budget Office, CBO, there is a 99% chance that outlays will exceed revenues by 2030. We cannot allow it to reach that point. There are many fixes that have been suggested such as adjusting the retirement age for future recipients or mean testing future Social Security recipients. I'm not endorsing any one of these particular suggestions, but I am endorsing a discussion that will honestly deal with the problem. We owe it to ourselves and our children to put this program on the right track. I invite people of all parties and ideologies to discuss these problems and search for solutions. But let's do so in an honest way. Nobody and I mean nobody wants to end Social Security or Medicare, but reforming them is absolutely necessary to keeping them. Just like President Kennedy said, I refuse to vote for insolvency, to bankrupt Social Security and Medicare, 
and to hurt those who depend on it and will depend on it. Starting from that premise, let's move forward and fix Social Security, Medicare, and our budget. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to listen.